I will talk about uh, trauma viva for FRCS exam, trauma and orthopedics. This is our part two. We, are, we will talk about lower limb case scenario. I'd like to uh, appreciate uh, Orthopedic Academy YouTube channel. And also I recommend this book, the concise orthopedic notes, very concise, very beneficial, very cost effective, especially uh, shortly before the exam. I'd like to disclose uh, that some picture and comment are based on orthopedic trauma association lecture on, available uh, on their website. My first case is a typical case of the exam. It is frequently asked, very important and very basic, which is uh, in knee dislocation. The question can be in many ways, uh, either to uh, how to how to deal with this knee dislocation in emergency, or how to deal with uh, this one shortly after. He can give scenario with vascular injury or without vascular injury. All of these can be happened in the exam. Uh, first of all, he may ask you about what are the possible injured structures. Most important, but most, not most frequent, uh, which is vascular injury, 5 to 15%. Neurological injury, especially common peroneal injury, uh, 20 to 40%. Soft tissue injury, like ACL, BCL, MCL, postlateral corner, 15 to 35. Bone injury fractures, like tibial plateau fracture, tibial spine, uh, patella fracture, avulsion fracture, all can happen. What are the, your priorities are many injuries. My priority is vascular status of the limb. Then neurological status of the limb, then to rule out compartment syndrome. How you assess the vascular status of the limb? by ankle brachial index. He may ask about what is ankle brachial index. Uh, the do, uh, Doppler systolic arterial pressure in the injured limb over the Doppler systolic arterial pressure in an injured limb of brachial artery. If it is ankle brachial index blue 0.9, is this indication for CT and geography? Uh, first of all, I will reduce the knee dislocation. After production of the knee, uh, you found normal pulse and normal perfusion. So admission for follow-up, if pulse become questionable, arteriography. If after knee reduction, normal pulse with good perfusion, arteriography. But abnormal pulse with bad perfusion, surgical sepuration, without investigation, do on, on table arteriography. This is algorithm, knee dislocation, reduce the knee, assess pulses, obtain ankle brachial index. Ankle brachial index more than 0.9, admit for 24 hour close observation, serial examination. If distal pulse asymmetric or distal pulse present with ankle brachial index, below 0.9 arteriogram. If absent pulse with clear signs of ischemia, emergent surgical exploration with untable arteriogram. Uh, when you do CT and geography, you found intimal tear. Okay, I will ask for help from vascular team. Maybe this intimal tear, uh, not indication for surgery. I will follow uh, the recommendation from vascular surgery team, but I will not use tourniquet at time of any reconstruction, uh, reconstruction knee surgery. 
but I will follow the patient. Uh, in case of absent perfusion, we will do emergent surgical exploration. When to decide to operate immediately, irreducible knee dislocation, open knee dislocation, associated vascular injury, associated vascular injury with no perfusion of the leg, and in case of compartment syndrome. How you diagnose compartment syndrome? Pain out of proportional of injury, uh, severe edema, tense compartment, uh, measuring compartment pressure, maybe, but depending on clinical signs is more, more important. Don't depend on uh, vascular status or perfusion or uh, nerve injury. What you will do in compartment syndrome? First, I will reduce the knee, provisional external fixator to secure reduction, and for compartment fascia. This is another uh, scenario. Okay, this patient who is needs location, what is your approach in emergency room? I will reduce the, the knee, complete neuro, uh, neurovascular evaluation, evaluation of soft tissue, attention to open injuries, and dimple sign. I will measure ankle brachial index, then I will do knee radiograph. and MRI to assess the ligamentous injury, which is expected. And keep in mind, and uh, a high index of suspicion for any emergent needs to surgical trip to OR. How to reduce this uh, dislocation? Gentle manual traction, avoid pressure over popliteal fossa, careful anterior translation of the bone located posteriorly, make sure to document presence of pulse before and after reduction. How to maintain reduction? I can maintain the reduction in a brace or splint if the patient has obesity or a high degree of soft tissue compromise, I will use spanic cell fixate. Then we will proceed to multi-ligamentous knee injury. Okay, and we are now one week or 10 days after the incident of knee dislocation. It is reduced, it is kept an external fixator. There is no compartment syndrome. There is no vascular injury. What you will do next? Uh, next step is to management of soft tissue injury. There is uh, there is many ways to uh, manage soft tissue injury. There is acute repair. There is del delayed reconstruction. There is staged two stage repair and reconstruction. And you should tell this is my preferred choice. Repairing or uh, reconstructing the peripheral ligament, especially posterolateral corner, followed by delayed crochet ligament reconstruction once the range of motion is restored. He may ask when, at which time. Usually we do a uh, uh, lateral corner repair or reconstruction within three weeks. Crochet ligament may be after six weeks from injury. Okay, what you will do first? BCL or ACL reconstruction? The answer is BCL reconstruction first because BCL determines the reference knee axis of rotation. So BCL is taking priority over ACL because it determines the reference alignment between tibia and fib. To summarize, once knee dislocation reduced, hinged knee brace, if suitable, is an external fixator in very unstable knee, morbid obese or open injury. 
hinged external fixator in association with multi ligament knee reconstruction, especially in cases of vascular repair. Definitive ligament reconstruction three to four weeks after initial injury will be dedicated, will be dictated by soft tissue envelope and overall all patient clinical status. But, uh, BCL is the critical structure to determine the proper relationship between tibia and femur. Peripheral ligament should be reconstructed, not only repaired. ACL may be performed in a stage manner. Okay, this is another case. Also, uh, it is a common distal femur fracture in uh, skeletally mature patient, which shows some comminution. Uh, also, it is associated with uh, knee osteoarthritis. You should describe the X-ray. Describe all finding you see. Okay, this is a fracture. Uh, this there is comminution. There is osteoarthritis of the knee. What you will do? I will take history. What is the mode of injury? It is isolated injury or it is a trauma vision. I will ask about medical history, surgical history. What is the benefit of medical history? What do you want to know from medical history? This patient may, be, uh, may, may have uh, uh, cancer, cancer like cancer prostate, because he's a male. If a female cancer breast, cancer thyroid, maybe it's a pathological fracture. What is the mode of trauma? If the patient has trivial trauma, if the patient has uh, pain before the injury, uh, it will make suspicion for a surgical uh, fracture. What is the benefit of uh, presence of osteoarthritis? Because the patient will have also limitation of motion because of pain. Also, this patient will need uh, total knee arthroplasty in the future. All of this should be mentioned. How you will fix this uh, fracture? Okay, I will fix this fracture with the locked blade. Uh, I will put the blade la, la, on uh, lateral cortex of the knee. Uh, priorities is to restore the anatom anatomical axis and the mechanical axis. I will not put any screws in the comminution. I, I will not fill uh, all the holes because here, I don't like to put high stiffness constant. So this comminution could heal by low stiffness plate. So I will leave some holes empty. This is important. I will not put any screws in the comminution. I can use biological uh, plating system. Also, I will use long blade. You, you, you better to use long blade as you can to distribute the stiffness over the uh, over large area. Uh, this is another case, but this is a difficult fracture. Uh, 68 years old, left leg crushed. This is, you will ask about mood of trauma. This is closed door open. This is open fracture. Uh, also, it is there is high comminution, segmental fracture of the femur with interarticular extension. So you, you should examine this patient for any vascular injury. If the patient is traumatized, I will apply ATLS protocol. I will take care of the patient as open fracture also, uh, either in emergency. Maybe the scenario will be directed toward open fracture, or he will jump directly to a definitive treatment of, uh, uh, of this fracture. He may talk about 
principles of fixation of segmental fracture or how to fix this interarticular uh, fracture. There are many scenarios can be asked in this question. Uh, so in emergency, I will deal with the patient splintage and uh, putting soup goes over the wound, giving IV antibiotic early and prepare the patient for OR within 12 hours or 24 hours for surgical debriding and the provisional fixation by uh, external fixators. Uh, he may ask about what about open reduction internal fixation directly. It's possible if the wound is not highly contaminated according to uh, the debridement, the staging of the fracture, fracture of the femur, according to Castello, it should be three. If the patient has wound about one centimeter, Okay, it is not Gastello 1 or Gastel, even Gastello 2. No, it is a Gastello 3. If there is no soft tissue, if there is no skin uh, injury need for flab or uh, there is no vascular injury, it will be Gastello 3A. Okay, you did the debridement and you did external fixator. And after two weeks and the, uh, the wound is healed or it is closed without any signs of discharge or infection, what you will do? Okay, I will do open reduction internal fixation by a biological plating uh, like this, very a long plate with putting, uh, leaving some screw holes empty. and not putting any screws in the comminution, and also restoring the anatomical reduction by uh, this look debate. But unfortunately, during follow-up, a distal femur went into non-union. This is after uh, 16 months. There is some healing, but also it is not fully healed. Here, there is CT scan. The fracture is not healed. What is your workup? First, I should exclude infection. I will take history for asking about discharge directly after uh, surgery, prolonged use of antibiotic, which indicate presence of infection. Uh, he, the answer is no, 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 no. There is no discharge, no uh, delayed wound healing. Uh, it went smoothly. There was no fever. SR and CRP. Uh, SR is 15, CRP is 1. So what you will do next? Uh, persistent pain. And is there is persistent pain, no infectious symptoms. Skin healed with no draining signs, and CRB is normal. Okay, I will uh, go directly for revision of this uh, uh, open induction and the internal fixation. Uh, he may ask, you will put on graft or not? Uh, I will debride the fracture. Uh, making refreshment of the uh, of the bone ends. Uh, bone graft can, could be added. I can use another different uh, cholesterol like DCS, along DCS, like this. But I will use few screws like he did, not putting screws proximally to avoid stress riser. So, he may present this picture, okay, the uh, fracture healed very well. But don't forget to take also bone biopsy or a tissue biopsy for tissue culture to exclude infection. And okay, he will ask about, what about distal femur replacement? Distal femur replacement, 
is an option if the patient has severe comminution uh, intraarticular or the fracture went into non-union uh, despite multiple uh, surgeries for uh, open ductual tunnel fixation or associated with osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, the advantage is immediate with pairing, eliminate risk of non-union, malunion, fixation failure, post-traumatic osteoarthritis. Disadvantage, limited salvage options in case of steolysis, loosening, very prosthetic fraction. This may be uh, the end of uh, station question. This is uh, another question which is more advanced. Uh, now, uh, AO Association uh, are recommending double blading, long lateral blade, and short medial blade because they think that uh, single lateral blade is not uh, suitable to restore the mechanical axis or anatomical axis because the, the mechanical axis is passing medial to the blade. Mechanical axis is passing here, so it is away from the blade. So they want to use this one. The best for restoring the mechanical axis and the anatomical axis is the nail. But the blade is not bene uh, beneficial or it is not advantageous for restoring the mechanical or anatomical axis. Uh, the nail is better than, but when you are unable to use nail, intramedullary nail, so they are recommending to use double blade. Uh, the question can be asked about Hoffa fracture. What is Hoffa fracture? It is, a, uh, it is caused by shear moment through posterior condyle. How to reduce, uh, how to fix. It can be fixed from anterior to posterior screws, reduced by reduction clamp like this. Flexion of the knee will help to reduce the fracture. Fixation should be outside articular margin when possible. Also, we are using headless screw or uh, screws with countersink. Also, when you use uh, tourniquet, when you want to use tourniquet in fracture like this, it is advisable to uh, flex the knee uh, before inflating the tourniquet to make uh, the hamstring muscle relax it. Because when you inflate the tourniquet, hamstring muscle will be tight. So it will be difficult for uh, reduction. So bend the knee before inflating the tourniquet, bending the knee while you reduce and fix the fraction. Uh, also, it is another case, but this fracture, you should notice the quality of bone. Quality of bone is very bad. This patient mostly osteoporotic, distal femur uh, fracture. She, uh, is a, she is a female, about 65 years old, fall at home, presented with this fracture. How you will fix? Uh, we will fix by a very long lock de blade. Why lock de blade? Because it is advisable for osteoporotic fracture. Long blade, not filling all the holes, not putting screws at fracture site, I will use circulage to uh, make anatomical reduction. How long should be the blade in osteoporotic bone in the femur? The classic uh, blade could be from one metaphysis to the other to distribute the stiffness and to make low stiffness construct. Uh, and not filling all the holes. Here, two empty holes, two empty holes. Here, the blade can reach the proximal metaphysis. So the blade from one metaphysis to the other. Look, 
all of these holes with no screws. Also, only it is a biological system. Here, you can see the stables here on the small wound uh, in distal femur and small wound, smaller wound in proximal femur. Uh, this is the recommendation for any osteoporotic fracture uh, in the femur. The, the principle is to splint hold the femur, to splint hold the femur by this plate, putting uh, few screws proximal and few screws also distal, splinting all the femur, distributing stiffness uh, over the femur and low stiffness around the fracture. Thank you.